Hi, I'm Rod Suskin. Welcome back to Rod TV. Well, last week I was showing you everything that's stressing us and talking about that very important cycle that's been stressing us for some years now and is not quite finished with us yet. So if you haven't watched that, I do recommend that you give that a quick look. It's only a 10 minute episode from last week and you'll be better placed to understand what I want to talk about this week, because this week I received a question from a viewer in the United States where, as we know, um, the election battle perhaps of modern history is gathering momentum more or less underway. Over the last year or so, Americans and the rest of the world have been at first amused and then astonished and finally a little perturbed about the surprising rise of Donald Trump in the, in the election battle. And I received a question from Karen in California who wanted to know whether the conditions at the moment in any way are similar to the conditions at the time of the rise of Hitler. Now, you're probably aware that over the last two weeks, Donald Trump has been increasingly compared to Adolf Hitler, not the least because he has been asking his followers to raise their hand in a pledge to vote for him, which looks remarkably like the Nazi right-handed salute, even though without a doubt, he didn't really intend to emulate that. He probably doesn't have a strong knowledge of history anyway. Nevertheless, it started setting off warning bells. And in fact, many of the comparisons um, have been made by various commentators, both political commentators and satirists, news agency, and even the sister of the famous Anne Frank has come out and said that Donald Trump, um, Donald Trump's rise and his methods are not unlike those of Hitler. So it is a real question. It's a worthwhile question having a look at because when we have a look a little bit closer, we get a little bit of insight into what's been going on, certainly in the context of Trump and Hitler. So we need to start back with that cycle that I mentioned last week. And this is the cycle of the planets Uranus and Pluto, who like any two bodies that we look at in space from an astrological point of view, are constantly in a cyclical relationship with each other, going round and round, forming various relationships with one another. And the cycle of social change is the cycle of the planets Uranus and Pluto. Last week I explained to you that the current cycle of social change, which comes up only every 35 to 45 years, is what's responsible for much of what's been going on chaotically in the world for the last couple of years and promises a little bit more of that. Well, that cycle does repeat itself every 35 to 45 years and is really part of a larger cycle. And that cycle has a pulse of more or less every 35 to 45 years. For example, the last time it was around was 1966. And of course, 1966 and thereabouts was a time of enormous social change. The civil rights movement gathered momentum as we moved up to 1966. There was an incredible amount of chaos and uh, protest, etc., associated with that change, again, as I mentioned last week. One interesting thing that I thought, since I'm not going to talk about 1966 in particular, one interesting thing that I thought that you might be fascinated to see. So in our current phase of social change, of course, the Mayan prophecy fit in there. The Mayan prophecy was a popular, largely new age prophecy um, based on a reading of the ancient Mayan calendar that suggested that some kind of end of time or end of world or something would happen in December 2012. The interesting thing is that the origin of the Mayan prophecy is a 1966 book by Michael Coe called The Maya. Uh, that's the first time someone interprets the archaeological findings 
as suggesting that there is some kind of end of time in 2012. If you look at this graph over here, you can see that the Mahayan prophecy essentially arose during the previous Uranus-Pluto cycle and targeted the current Uranus-Pluto cycle without anyone knowing or caring about Uranus and Pluto. So that is an interesting phenomenon. In fact, the way that cycles are operating are, of course, they're part of a larger cycle. In mathematics, in earth sciences, in astrology, we often use the four-part cycle. Think about new moon, first quarter, full moon, last quarter. Think about spring, summer, autumn, winter. The four stages of every cycle that we recognize so well. If you look at the sun's stages that create that solar cycle of the seasons, you can see that when the sun is at zero degrees, which we put it above the equator, when the sun is at zero degrees above the equator, is when we have spring or autumn. When the sun is at its maximum distance from the equator, which on the earth is only 23 and a half degrees, but if we measure that position in space, in space the sun has moved 90 degrees since its previous position. So every 90 degrees, the cycle is at its extremes, and we get the extremes of shortest day and longest night, or longest night and shortest day, and of course we get the significant shift of the seasons that is associated with summer and winter, if you like, the main seasons. So the main shifts and the extreme shifts come at these 90 degree points. In fact, Uranus and Pluto are at one of those 90 degree points at this time, which means that in 1966, they were at the zero point, which is birth in chaos, if you like, um, as opposed to the extremes that are seen at the 90 degree marks. So the question arises, when were they last at their 90 degree point? And you won't be surprised to know that the answer to that is around 1932. That was the time before 1966 that Uranus and Pluto got together. And that's the last time since 2015 that they were at that extreme part of that cycle. Here you can see that cycle represented. And I've inserted onto that cycle the major events that lead to the complete seizure of power by Adolf Hitler. From his initial uh, successes of his party through negotiating with the then chancellorship to gain the position of chancellor himself, right down to finally eliminating the parliamentary system and taking complete control as a dictator. As you can see here, that all occurred during the dance of the 90 degree uh, cycle between Uranus and Pluto. Dramatic social change, extremes of really everything that would eventually lead to, of course, a major war not unusual for massive social change to that. And of course, this is also the time of the great crash of the New York Stock Exchange and major financial collapse worldwide that would lead to essentially the modern economic system that postdates that. So in fact, we're not surprised to discover that Hitler rose during the last extreme period of Uranus-Pluto. But let's put this current Uranus-Pluto cycle into perspective by combining it. Here you can see the two cycles next to each other. And what you can see is that um, while the pattern of such cycles is more or less similar, the timing is different. Hitler's rise occurs during that a Uranus-Pluto dance, so that by the time it's finished, basically he's already in place. What's happened this time is that the Uranus-Pluto certainly was the reappearance of Donald Trump on the political stage, and 
the 2015 remarkable successes that took everyone by surprise, but at first no one was taking seriously. In 2016, everyone's beginning to take it seriously, but as you can see, in 2016, those cycles are beginning to drift apart. So it seems to me, Karen, that the answer to your question is that although the conditions are rather similar, and so we're seeing uh, uh, economic extremes and populism leading to the rise of someone like uh, Trump, just as the exact conditions led to the same for the rise of Hitler, there are some differences with which we can cling to hope that it isn't really that. Because it seems that as we get to the time of the election and the inauguration of the president, it is beyond the uh, Uranus-Pluto cycle. And because we're working in a democratic system that there doesn't seem to be any room for someone to negotiate to seize power, over override the Senate, or any of those kind of things, we are probably safe because if Trump were to become president, he would do so essentially after the Uranus-Pluto cycle. So it's a little bit like I'm saying, it's slightly too late. And even though, as you saw last week, the cycle kind of tries to converge again um, towards the beginning of next year, which is when the president is inaugurated, it seems to me that it's kind of, it's past its peak. So I think probably what we will be seeing is some of the shift away from that populist power that Trump has. But I'll admit, and you can see from those charts, it's pretty close. It's very similar conditions. And we really, in terms of those conditions, resting on the hope that Trump has essentially missed the perfect timing to be the next Hitler. And we can be relieved about that. Actually, to an astrologer, the more pertinent question would, of course, be, is Trump in any way similar to Hitler? I'm not going to go into how to read astrological charts now, so I'm not going to show you their charts. But suffice it to say, they are very different. And of course, the persona of Trump is very different than the persona of Hitler. In many ways, Hitler was an evil genius. His agenda had been going on for decades. He was a long-time member of the party. He had been groomed to be in that position for decades. He had been through his mid-twenties, attempt to take over the parliament and then writing his book Mein Kampf. So in other words, he was extremely focused and extremely passionate about his uh, racist and warmongering beliefs. Trump shows those things, but as we all know, he is a buffoon. And although it is wise to say, don't always be fooled by a buffoon, there's no doubt that a lot of his populism is through stumbling along, saying the next thing that attracts attention, uh, saying things which are really calculated to provoke. Hitler wasn't calculated to provoke. He was an agenda. The things that he said had an intention and an end destination, where it does seem to me that Donald Trump is rather random and erratic. He's like an idiot that has been given the stage and he's just capitalizing on the populism. So based on that, and based on the slightly too late timing, I would suggest that uh, America is not likely to find itself in the grip of a dictator in the scary event that Donald Trump becomes president, which to me, as, a, as to many of you listening anywhere and in the, the States, still seems a ridiculous impossibility, but the numbers, the polls, the, the march towards the nomination seem to differ. So worst case scenario, Trump becomes president, we probably don't have a dictator on our hands, but America will have a lot of work to do to try and obviously deal with a buffoon in the White House. So let's keep hoping that it's not going to be that. Let's uh, remind ourselves that never mind Trump in particular, the lesson from the similarity with the 1930s is that we are living in a world where extremism is in the, on the rise, where populism is on the rise, and where all these uh, extremes are causing conflict between people. That's what we need to be very aware of. In the 30s, it would lead to a war within seven years, and there remains a danger 
that that is possible, given that it's the same 90 degree cycle and that the same form of conflict uh, lies there, fortunately, seemingly not quite as the extreme. So keeping our fingers crossed on that one. Let's take a few minutes to answer one of your questions. And this week I have a question from Susan. And Susan wants to know why is she feeling out of control? Will this feeling of out of control pass? Should she just lay low? Or does she need to take some action and perhaps go and find a new job or do something like that? Well, Susan, like many Capricorns, during this period, you will experience your own mini little Pluto cycle, a once in a lifetime Pluto cycle. And Susan, it's with you right now. It's not quite the same as the social change cycle, but it is very much about finding out where you're not in control. What is happening to you is that you will discover in so many ways where you're not in control. And it's kind of like a lesson in taking back power, in identifying where you're not able to be in control. So you've given away too much power in identifying where you need to come back to yourself and your own life to reclaim your power, because typically it's been given to others or invested in others or something like that. And the only way to take it back is to recognize, to become more selfish, to draw the line in many ways. Susan, this phase is going to be intense until and through May, after which it will begin to recede, but actually it remains in your chart on and off through to the end of 2017. Before you panic, let me remind you, who says being in control is such a good thing and who's really in control anyway? It's not as if you're going to feel the same for two years, but it does mean that actually you do need to take some proactive action. First stage, the stage you're in now, recognizing where you're not in control, recognizing where you need to be in control, recognizing where you've lost power and given away power so much, and importantly, what you need to get rid of, put behind you, eliminate from your life. Hopefully, by the time you may has finished, you've um, identified a lot of that. And then as you go forward into the rest of the cycle, it's not about being in control so much as taking action so that you exercise your own power. If that power doesn't lead to control, separate those two things out. Control is not you, what, what you really need, but power over your own life is where you're aiming towards. And this phase you're going through is kind of calculated to get you there. It will help you reestablish a sense of power in your own life. Give it time. It's going to take up to two years to do it. But in the second half of 2016, you'll be feeling in a much better position and ready to act. So in summary, this is not about laying low. This is about identifying, eliminating, and taking some proactive action. Good luck with that. Remember, you can send your questions about your own life just like that, or any questions about the times we live in, the cosmos itself, anything that you think I might be able to shed a little light through my astrological and sometimes um, African Sangoma scope. So hopefully I'll see you back here next week at noon when we'll be doing just that. Remember to send your questions to this address or visit my website over here at this address where you can um, forward your questions to me, any questions that you have. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share this with your friends and keep it going. And I look forward to seeing her next week. Till then, bye.